Welcome to the Asset Optics Quick Start Learning Series. In this installation, Preventive Maintenance Scheduling Session 1, we will set out to learn the overall PM scheduling process and the difference between fixed interval and floating interval PM schedules. We will also learn how to set up new PM schedules and how work orders are generated and released from PM schedules. Lastly, we will look at how we can predetermine who the PM work order owner will be, whether it is a specific user or a queue. First, we need to understand what a PM schedule represents and some key definitions. A PM schedule links an asset tag to a model work order and specifies the interval in which PM work orders are generated and released. An asset tag is a physical or logical asset that you set up in the system. A model work order is a predefined work order template. We'll discuss that in a little bit more detail. The calendar interval and the interval unit of measure is the number of days or weeks between the PM work orders. The release window defines how many days in advance of the PM due date that the work order will be generated and released. And lastly, from a definition standpoint, PM due date override. On any of the PM schedules, you can enter a date and override the scheduling logic. Model work orders. So the model work order, again, is a pre-planned work order that serves as a template. More specifically, the model work order gets copied into a new work order every time and is linked to the asset that you specify on the PM schedule. Model work orders can be very simple, containing only a description and some simple text instructions, or they can be more comprehensive, containing many work tasks that are drawn from a standard work task library, complete with instructions and steps that have to be checked off along the way. The model work order can also reference planned parts so that when the PM work orders are released, the inventory is committed and subsequent purchase requisitions can be raised. So there are two types of calendar-based PM schedules, fixed interval and floating interval. For a fixed interval PM schedule, the due date for the next work order is based upon the, the due date for the existing or the current work order plus the scheduling interval. And for a floating interval, the due date for the PM is going to be based upon when the last work order was completed plus the scheduling interval. So it is recommended that you use fixed interval PM schedules for things like daily and weekly checklists, whereas floating intervals are more appropriate for longer term jobs. Now also, you need to take into consideration that since you always know the due date for the next work order on a fixed interval PM schedule, the system will continue to generate more work orders whether you complete the previous ones or not. If it's a floating interval PM, you need to complete the last work order before it knows when the next one will be due, so you can only have one work order open at a time. There are only three required data elements that you need to set up a new PM schedule. A model work order, an asset, and how frequent you want the work order to be generated. So we're gonna go set up a new one. We're gonna add a weekly checklist for a boiler. We've already created a model work order with the appropriate work instructions, and we already have the boiler asset in the system. So what we're gonna do is set up the new PM schedule to release the work order every seven days and be due on Friday. So we click on the PM Schedules tab, click the New Command button, and we see that we have a blank screen that pulls up here. We're going to go look up and select the model work order. Okay, It just so happens that the weekly safety check for boilers is showing here in my, in my recent list. However, I could search using just standard search functionality. I'm going to choose all fields, put in boiler, and I can see that this limits this down to um, just the model work orders that have the word boiler in them. I'm going to select this one. We're going to go in here, look up the particular asset. I'm going to set this up for boiler number one, which is in my recent list. 
We're going to go in and put in a PM due date override, and we're going to say we want the first work order to be due this Friday. We're going to change the release window from 30 days to 6 days so that it releases it that releases the work order the very um, really every every Saturday is when this will generate. We need to specify the new work order status. We're going to change that to ready to schedule and then we're going to go say that this is to be done every seven days and the default for floating interval is checked so we're going to uncheck that and that makes it a fixed interval. It's set to auto release. Now we could put in an end date after which no more PM work orders would be generated but we're going to leave this blank and it will just generate in perpetuity. We're going to save this. So we can take a look at this appropriate data. We see that the PM due date is um, 5-4. Um, that's because we put in this override and we actually should have put this into an active status earlier. We're going to go ahead and generate, manually generate, the first PM work order. Click the command button and it says it's processing. And now what we're going to see is that the very first work order gets created that has a due date of May the 4th, 2018 right here. And of course we can see what that work order is in the related list. Now we can also see that the PM due date has progressed to 511 May the 11th. That's because this is a fixed interval. This is a fixed interval PM schedule. We generated we generated the current work order and it now has the date to determine when the next one is. So that is how the date gets calculated. Releasing PM work orders. If the auto release attribute is checked and the status equals active, then the PM work order will get released on the, on the release date. There's a batch job that runs at night and it automatically generates the work order. If you do not want the work order to be automatically released, you can uncheck the auto release attribute. Whether this attribute is checked or not, you can always manually generate a work order and put it into the backlog and that work order will have a due date of the PM due date that is showing here. So we currently have one work order 4463 that is due this coming Friday. I can click the generate PM work order command button one more time and it will generate in advance of the release date another work order 4464 that has a due date of 511. Now if we go take a look at these work orders right here we can see that this work order is owned by Michael Edwards. Michael Edwards is the record owner for this PM schedule. You can predefine who the record owners will be by defining who the PM schedule record owner is. And that ma it matters not whether the record owner is a user or is a queue. If you want the PM work orders to be owned by a queue, you can change you can change the the PM schedule owner to be the queue that you that you want the work orders to be owned by and when the system automatically generates the work orders we're going to manually release one here and go take a look at that record owner this is the new record we go here we can see that it is owned by the queue so when you set up a queue you need to ensure that you enable the queue, enable both the preventive main, the PM schedule object and the work order object for that queue and you can establish it this way. To recap, we had four specific learning objectives to gain an understanding of the PM scheduling process and the difference between fixed and floating intervals, to learn how to set up a new PM schedule, to learn how PM schedules are released and how to assign PM, how to pre-assign PM work orders to users or queues. Thank you.